This time round, we focus on something slightly different and we travel all the way to Saudi Arabia. Look at that shot. It's a beautiful picture uh, with the sand dunes and with the one uh, motorcyclist, if I call the motorcyclist, yes, yes. Uh, uh, taking on there. It's such a beautiful picture because that's who, that's Daniel Sanders uh, competing in the stage 13 of Dakar 2023. It's beautiful. The one thing you watch uh, the Dakar rally for is such images. It's mm -hmm. just a beautiful thing. Of course, this year it's had a bit more excitement with the likes of Carlos Sainz being there to mm -hmm. support his father. You actually met Carlos Sainz. You did? I, I'll, I'll actually share a photo of myself with Carlos Sainz. He's a member, he's the father yes. of Sainz, who is uh, the yes. Formula 1 driver. Yes. So I met him. Very humble, gentle Man. but as you said it's, it was good to have him there as well it's good to have those those big names in motorsport there's also sebastian Loeb, if i'm yes, not mistaken yes, yes. he's also in dakar rally my only fight with dakar rally is that it doesn't happen in dakar that's, that's my only I'm fight sure the whole like the name <laughs> even if you see dakar rally and then you say saudi arabia like yeah what's going on yeah. that's the only bit about it but then you understand why it can't happen yes uh, in west africa as it used to happen uh, in many many years, ago. years yes now let's focus on uh, something else of course that has also been trending uh, in terms of different uh, sporting activities on the timeline uh, let's uh, jump into the twitter webs and have a look at what has been transpiring obviously the english premier league would dominate the feedback um, and in banter Premier League clubs checking for when they will face Chelsea and Liverpool. Why, Wakabi? <laughs> because they're both stuck in places they haven't been for the last few years. Chelsea are 10th. Uh, they've really, really struggled. I think they'd lost seven games before the win uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, seven out of nine or something like that. So it's that whole thing that everyone wants to play Chelsea. And of course, you know, Liverpool also going through such a hard period. They are all very own manager said that was horrible to watch. They've been so poor. So all teams are like, for all those years you've been beating us, now we cannot wait to play you. <laughs> Well, there's another one here. This is a different sport, and we head into the tennis court. Uh, this is Australian Open. Rather, we'll be touching on that shortly. Uh, it's still football, and uh, we have uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one here. The gentleman they had a quite a torrid game over the weekend, but uh, that's how football is sometimes. <laughs> Once again, I like the humor around it because, of course, Luke Shaw, left back, playing in centre back, Aling Haaland, uh, the best striker in the EPL, and then for him to not have a kick throughout the game, hence that quip that you know what I don't know shows pocket or were too deep for me to see. <laughs> I, I, the humor around it is really funny, but he also captures the essence of what happened in the game yes. because Haaland was really was nowhere. a non-factor. Yes. Nowhere to be seen. I like what you said, non-factor. <laughs> <laughs> One of those rare well, t times that uh, he was not firing on all cylinders. Uh, let's focus on something else that, of course, was, uh, make, was trending online. Uh, and uh, this one is, uh, we'll have it shortly on your screens. And I believe it's related to the man who was in Kenya uh, over the weekend. I, I, I picked this one specifically because of the caricature that was used by our colleagues at Nation Africa. Loudmouth Mandonga silences critics. He walked the talk. He walked the talk, but he, he left yes. everyone. And, and also the fact that the hand, his, his, fist is, his fist is his mouth. Yes. Because he seems to do as much fighting with his mouth as he actually does with his, with his actual boxing. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why it makes a lot of sense. Because he talks a lot, and that talk, I almost feel as if all that talking is part of his weapon. Mm -hmm. It's part of his weaponry. Like he knows the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you down. Mm -hmm. I am going to talk you down. I don't think I've heard the boxer speak this much, maybe since Muhammad Ali. I think there's just one. Stop there's talking. one I met. There's one I met. He's actually a Ugandan. It's called Moses. I don't know if boxing. Moses Golola. So Moses Golola used to say that he's the only one who can kick the River Nile out of, uh, <laughs> out of whatever it is right now. He say, used to say some outlandish things that if he looks at a woman, I won't say what you said after. Yeah. But he had very strange things to say. But he was also very, very, uh, a lot of bravado. I think it's just your way to capture the imagination of people. When you think back through this country in the last 20 years, who is the one boxer you remember? Napuni. No. Congestina Ache. Okay, Kongea, 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 Kongea as well. Why? Because yeah. she, she always used to tell us, yes, 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 mapema, yes, kazi isha mapema. Yes, so yes. it became this phrase. So you've got to have a boxer who's able to talk and speak about it and create this larger than life persona. And every time I think about boxing, I just remember Konja saying, Mkuja mapema, kazi isha mapema. I think it's just that thing where you, you market yourself with a particular phrase or a particular way and everyone gets drawn to you. Okay. The final uh, tweet, or uh, rather something that has been uh, trending online, is this specific one related to, to um, is she American-Japanese or Japanese-American? American-Japanese. Anyway, she... Something. Yeah. Yeah. We are right somehow, to some extent. <laughs> she has roots in both those yes. countries, and she shared this on her platform. I can't wait to get back, get back on court, but here's a little life update for 2023. Well, she was expected to take part the Australian Open, but she is with child. Yeah, she's with child, and it's interesting because it doesn't happen 
often in tennis, in athletics, especially in that side of the world. In Africa, it tends to happen quite a bit. But for her to uh, to be in the family way so early in her career, it's something that doesn't happen often. More often than not, they wait until slightly, when mm -hmm. they're slightly older. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just that one thing she needed because she's had a topsy-turvy mm -hmm. two years yes. since the French Open where she didn't want to do interviews and, and she was okay with being fined and then she spoke about mental, mental health issues. Things have just haven't aligned the way you'd expect them to align. Mm -hmm. Tokyo 2020 Olympics didn't quite go according to plan. So this seems to be something very different that has happened and she speaks about wanting to come back so that her child can see her mother play. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that this one has a different impact on her uh, and she's able to come back uh, to reset recharge mm -hmm. and come back like our Kenyan athletes say with Nguvu Ya Pili. <laughs> they call it Nguvu Ya Pili. Yeah, you come with Nguvu Ya Pili once you become a mother. Well, congratulations Naomi Osaka. Of course, she's with child. She'll take a break and then she's expected back hopefully in 2024. She has four titles, four uh, slam titles and uh, I think